Hello, New York Giants fans, and welcome to an emergency edition of your Valentine's Views podcast. I'm your host, as always, Ed Valentine of Big Blue View, and we're coming to you on Friday afternoon, just uh, a little bit after the New York Giants announced the hiring of Joe Shane, Buffalo Bills assistant GM, as their new general manager. Chris Flum and Joe DeLeon put up a quick uh, emergency podcast for you guys in the uh, in in the moments right after the hiring was announced. And what I'm going to do here at this point is I'm going to speak with Matt Rich Warren of SB Nation's Buffalo Rumblings about uh, the, the Buffalo perspective on, on the Giants' new GM. Matt, how you doing? Doing great. How are you, Ed? I'm good. I see that. I see that you uh, you came prepared to you came prepared to represent this afternoon as we do this. Yeah. So I've got my Josh Allen jersey on today, but for the last this is what day 19. I've been wearing Bills gear to work every single day since they made the playoffs, and I will continue doing it until they're eliminated from the playoffs. And so when they win the Super Bowl, I'll just keep going. So so the <laughs> so the scary question has to be do you have that much buffalo bills gear is it clean how does it smell at this point <laughs> it's clean I'm, I'm not a superstitious guy that like won't wash the jersey or won't like you know wash the shirts or anything like that and they're not all jerseys a lot of them are t-shirts we have a lot of po- folks over in buffalo that do uh t-shirts to commemorate stuff but i think it's it's definitely in the mid to high 20s of number of pieces of of, of bills related like gear that I can wear. And so like I cheated last week when we got a ton of snow and I counted my big, you know, old starter jacket that I wore to shovel snow and <laughs> stuff like that. But yeah, I, I've got a lot of it. <laughs> there you go. So you, so you haven't had to, to run any repeats yet. Not yet. Um, but uh, when they get, I think they have to get past the AFC championship game for me to uh, repeat stuff. <laughs> All right. So that, that sounds like fun. That sounds like a Bills fan for you for, you know, for, for sure. So we, we have to talk about Joe Shane. We have to talk about the decision that the New York Giants just made. And first of all, we, everybody has to understand it is pronounced Shane as far as yep. I know. Am I correct? I think that's right as well. Um, we, we don't get to talk to him a lot. Um, the Bills like this, the, the top down approach. So we've really only ever talked to uh, Brandon Bean every once in a while. Uh, we'll get like a video where they go kind of inside with one member of the staff and occasionally be Joe Shane. I think that's how it's pronounced. Right. So, so let me ask you this. There can't, there can't be a whole lot of surprise at this point that, that, the Giants uh, have a hired Shane, you know, from the Buffalo perspective, is there at this point? No, he was, uh, he wasn't a finalist with the Panthers, but he interviewed with the Panthers last year. This is the first time that I remember of him being a finalist anywhere. Um, So, I mean, a mild surprise, maybe you would have expected that maybe he would have, um, you know, had a couple close calls, but I mean, like I said, he was, he's been groomed for this for a long time. And so it's not exactly a surprise, especially with the looks that the bills front office has been getting over the last few years. Um, But like I said, I would have expected a couple more near misses. Uh, This is the first time he had a second interview and the first time he uh, landed the job. Nice. Well, I know the giants, the finalists were, were Joe Shane, Ryan Poles of Kansas city and Adam Peters of, of the San Francisco 49ers. And, and personally, I really didn't think there was a, a bad choice among the three. So I think the giants landed on three pretty good candidates. Yeah, that's probably true. I don't know a ton about the other two candidates, but I know that Shane certainly has paid his dues in multiple organizations with multiple owners and multiple general managers, you know, so he's got a lot of different perspectives and I'm sure we'll get into that a little bit more. What I know that, that he has the title assistant general manager in Buffalo or had the title assistant general manager. And, you know, people always ask me, well, you know, what what guys did he draft? What decisions did he make? What did he do? And, and for me, that's always murky because he might bang the table for a certain player in trade or, or in the draft, but that's Brandon Bean's decision in Buffalo. It, the decision doesn't come 
with the name Joe Shane on it. So what what is your understanding, at least of, of what he did in Buffalo, what his role was and, and how big of a, a factor he was in the decision making process there? Right. It's it's a great question and one that we can't always answer. Like we I like you said, I was gonna say bang the table too, just like you were. It's I don't know which guy was like his guy or, or anything like that, but he did come up through the college scouting ranks. And so he was doing a lot of, of that collegiate scouting for the NFL draft. Once he came to the Bills, um this is how Brandon Bean learned under David Gettleman. I'm sorry, I said his name. I'm sorry. Um, but oh yeah, um, yeah, that's 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 actually every once in a while I have to write that name still, and and, and I like you, I sort of apologize for it these right. days. But when Brandon Bean kind of came up under David Gettleman, like the more senior title he received, the more from the other side of the ledger he got. And so as the Bills hired uh, Joe Shane to be their assistant general manager, he was asked not just to do the college scouting stuff, but also some pro scouting, um, things about free agents. He was asked to do sit in on some of the phone calls and do some of the phone calls when they were attempting to sign free agents. I know the one time I remember actually hearing his name was when the Bills were trying to sign John Brown and Cole Beasley. They were literally on the phone with both of them at the same time and neither of the other two knew it and so they were <laughs> talking to each like joe was talking to one person i don't know dan morgan probably was talking to another person and brandon bean was like flip-flopping back and forth trying to close the deal and they ultimately did close that deal but but that was the thing that they were doing is like moving him past just college scouting that was the big i don't know shift Um, when they hired him as assistant general manager instead of the director of college scouting. He still was primarily doing that stuff, um, but he was more of like the, you know, third or fourth set of eyes on a guy instead of going, you know, and and being the primary scout for, you know, every single game in the SEC or whatever, whatever region you're talking about. Let me, let me ask you this. Brandon Bean came to the Bills, was it 2017, correct? After the draft and in 2017. After the draft in 2017, and and one of the one of the first things that he did, if I remember correctly, was to bring Joe Shane in to work with him. I know that those guys have a relationship going all the way back to to 2000 or 2001. And, and by the way, you know, for all of you folks that work in ticket offices and low level jobs in front offices, Joe Shane is your new national hero now <laughs> because his first job was selling tickets for the Carolina Panthers. So so he's your hero. If you think you can be a GM, you probably can. <laughs> you just well, have to get to know Brandon Bean. <laughs> right. Just get your foot in the door and work your way up. And both of those guys did. They both started as interns. You know, and they both, you know, worked their way up by proving that they could do each job that they were given. And it kind of does go to the, you know, just be good at whatever it is you're doing with an eye towards the next thing that you want to do and keep building towards that. And and both of those guys did that in Carolina, Um, both of that. And then they went a little bit of their separate ways with um, Shane going, I I can't remember if Miami was his next stop. I think it was. Um, And then eventually to the Bills. But, you know, they they both kind of earned it. And so you, you know, that they've got the credentials to, to kind of pull it off. So what I want to ask you is they came in together in Buffalo in 2017 and we know the bills history. We know that it had been, you know, forever since the bills had been successful. And in some ways that's where the Giants are right now because it's been a decade for the Giants with one playoff appearance, uh, five straight double-digit losing seasons. And Giants fans, I'm sorry again for reciting all of this stuff that you already know, but I have to do it. So so anyway, the, the question, Matt, for you is how, you know, we, we know Buffalo hit a home run drafting Josh Allen but how did things change, you know, from your perspective, just in terms of, of how the Bills did things? You know, what's your impression of how things changed mm-hmm. when, when Bean and, and, and Shane, you know, took charge of, of the front office? Well, this is going to be the fun part for Giants fans. It's also the terrible part. So 
those guys came to Buffalo along with Sean McDermott. McDermott was around for the 2017 draft. Bean wasn't. So you can't really count those players. But the first thing that they did in those off seasons was they got, and dur even during the season, was they got rid of guys that didn't want to be here. They, you know, they cut good players. They traded really good players over the course of their first you know, several months with the Bills. They, you know, trade Sammy Watkins, you know, a former top four pick. They uh, trade Marcel Darius, another top four pick. You know, they traded guys that had a lot of talent and everyone's like, oh, they're tanking, they're tanking. They weren't tanking. They were trying to get rid of, I'm trying to think of a good metaphor for it, but they were trying to get rid of the dead skin so that, you know, something new could grow in its place, right? And I know that's gross, sorry, but they were trying to get rid of, the dead weight so that the rest of the tree could thrive, you know? And so they were able to do that, but they had to ship out really quality people. They got rid of people in the scouting department. They got rid of people really at every level of the organization and rebuilt it from the ground up in, in really both Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean's likeness. Now those two guys are very different in personalities. Uh, Bean tries to be a little bit more friendly with the players, I think. Um, and I don't know, Joe Shane, I, you can't be inauthentic when you're in that role. So if he can't really like, you know, goof around with the players, I'm not 100% sure that he's going to try and do that. But professionally, I mean, we're not talking about like, you know, they're not going out to the bar and, you know, getting slobber knockered and everything like that. But they're hanging out in the hallways. Brandon Bean loves to do the fist bump when he walks down the hall, you know, and, and talk to players on their level, not ignore them. And I think that's where you're going to see it. It's going to be that personal connection. It's going to be getting rid of the guys that don't want to be there. It's about finding guys that really buy in and talent does not trump all with these guys. Um, you know, they wanted, a, obviously Josh Allen, when they drafted him had a, a super high ceiling, but he also had a super low floor and his personality is what fit. They could have gone with a guy like Josh Rosen who may have had a higher floor and they would have been able to plug in but they went with, you know, a big swing and they went with a guy that felt like fit their culture more than anything. And I think that is what Giants fans should probably take away from, from this hire is that they're, he's, it might not be right away, but they're going to find guys that fit their culture and guys that they can be foundational pieces. If you look at the Bills roster right now, it was, you know, Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer were guys that were signed before Brandon Bean took over and before um, Joe Shane came over. Um, they were signed by uh, Sean McDermott and then they drafted Tredavious White. And so Sean McDermott got his secondary, but most of the people after that were all, you know, Brandon Bean and, and that scouting department, you know, Tremaine Edmonds, Matt Milano, Josh Allen, uh, Devin Singletary, Stefan Diggs, you know, they, they over and over again, you find the guys that are making plays for the bills or guys that were added after Brandon Bean took over and after Joe Shane arrived. Interesting. And by the way, the, uh, the the words culture and foundational pieces are also dirty words in the Giants fan base well, these days, because because that's 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 all it. If you listen to Joe Judge's 11 minute rant a few weeks ago, we heard the words culture and foundation and those things so many times to cover up for the fact that the product that they were running out onto the field stunk yeah. that I, I think giants fans, giants fans are, are tired of hearing about culture and foundational pieces and all of that. But I do understand what you're saying is you have to have, you have to have players who, who fit the program that you want to run who fit the locker room that you want to have, who believe in what you're trying to sell, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, to your players in your organization. And, and I, I you know, so I, I understand that one of the things that, that I, that I was also taken by is that you mentioned that they did a lot of work to, to revamp the front office. And that's a big question with the giants, because I don't know if you've seen any of the reporting, but there's a lot of questions about dysfunction in the front office and protected people in the front office and Mara family members in the front office and, and <laughs> things like that. And, and I, it's encouraging to me, that Joe Shane has has been through a front office revamp before and knows how that goes. Yes, but also we didn't have the ownership 
trying to, I mean, let me, let me rephrase this. Kim Pagula is the owner of the Bills, along with her husband, Terry Pagula, but she's also the team president. So she theoretically has some say in like how the front office and, you know, the football side and all that stuff is run, but they've been very hands-off um, with the football decisions. And so I can't speak to the, you know, the Mara family and how, I don't know, ingrained those folks are in their front office with the New York Giants. But that's not really something that, that Bean and McDermott have had to deal with. They really gave uh, McDermott a lot of power when they hired him. Uh, they ended up firing their general manager right after that draft because they liked McDermott so much. And then they hired one of McDermott's, I don't know, closer work colleagues in Brandon Bean. And so they kind of coalesced all of that. And it's like, well, it's your ship now. You can run it. And I don't know how much needling the ownership was able to was was really doing behind the scenes and so that's something that that joe's going to have to negotiate that that bean didn't really have to do well the fact that that shane is the first what we would call outside general okay. manager that the giants have hired since george young in 1979 first gm with no connections to the organization is encouraging, I think, to Giants fans. And it's also encouraging that they have said that they will give him carte blanche to do what he wants. My question is, and I just wrote this a couple minutes ago at Big Blue View, is what happens when Joe Shane takes that carte blanche to John Mara's office and says, John, I want your nephew fired. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, you know. Uh, so, so we'll see how that works out, but I Maybe hope he that need to be fired. Maybe he can just be reassigned. Like, I, you know, I, I hope happen. that, I hope that he's got the stomach for those battles and we'll, That's we'll find out. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Let's talk a little bit about the giants also need a head coach. We know that Joe Shane worked with Brian Dable and with Leslie Frazier in Buffalo. And we know that both of those guys are sought after at this point. Uh, we know Leslie Frazier has been a head coach before Brian Dable hasn't. He gets talked about a lot for the Giants job because of Josh Allen, because of what he did with the Buffalo offense. The Giants obviously have Daniel Jones, who gets comparisons to Josh Allen in some respects, but obviously hasn't had the success. So Dable's a guy that's talked about a little bit. Brian Flores is a guy that gets talked about a lot. I don't think Shane and Flores really have a connection um, in the past. So I'm just curious where you think Joe Shane will land when it comes to, when it comes to a head coach. Well, one of the things that I've always liked about Sean McDermott is his growth mindset, his ability to change with new information. And it might take him a little bit longer than say the fans want to do, but you know, whether it's certain players or certain offensive schemes or even going for it on fourth down, like that, that's the number one quality I look for in any leader that I'm dealing with. And so if Joe Shane looks at Leslie Frazier, he's had a great ability to adapt over the years from the 1985 bears all the way, you know, to the defensive schemes that he's running now. He's a leader of men. I like Leslie Frazier a lot. Um, Brian Dable has had a great um, pedigree. He's, he's got a lot of experience working with multiple offensive systems, multiple coaching staffs. And so he's got to have opinions of his own on what to do. Um, I don't know Brian Flores as well. It, it strikes me that Flores might want more power than say Dable or Frazier might. Um, and just because he's in a little bit of a driver's seat and I don't know, I, maybe that's just me being, you know, from the outside looking in, but it just feels like he has a little bit more control over where he lands. Um, so I, I personally prefer Frazier over all of them, but at the same time, if Frazier comes, who's going to be his offensive coordinator, who's going to be the guy that he hires to run the offense like Sean McDermott did with Brian Dable. And so that just becomes the big question. Now at the same time, Dable and McDermott had never worked together when Sean McDermott hired him as the offensive coordinator in Buffalo to run the offense. So he made a big leap 
by hiring a guy from outside his little circle. I mean, the guy coached with Andy Reid. There's plenty of guys in the Andy Reid coaching tree that would have loved to be the offensive coordinator in Buffalo that Reid could have just been like, here, take this guy or something. Uh, but that didn't happen. He went outside. So, you know, being able to identify the coordinator who's going to work on the other side would help Frazier. Um, Dable has done a ton to bring Josh Allen along, but so is Josh Allen and his private quarterback coach and Bill's quarterback coach, Ken Dorsey. And so it's not going to be necessarily an apples to apples comparison for Daniel Jones and Josh Allen. Plus Daniel Jones is a little bit further along in his uh, career than Josh Allen was when Brian Dable came along. And so it's, you know, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and say that Brian Dable is like, you know, you hire him as your head coach and and Daniel Jones is going to be, you know, the next Josh Allen or even, you know, the next good quarterback in the NFL. But I think if, if that's the only concern that you have is Daniel Jones, I don't know why you wouldn't hire Brian Dable as your head coach. Yeah. I think there are other concerns, you know, throughout the roster, but obviously the fact that the giants have been 31st in offense the last two years, haven't scored 30 points in a game in those two years is yeah, uh, it, for us. <laughs> is 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 a big concern. So I you know wonder, you know, the the flip side with Brian Dable is, you know, who we who he would bring in to run a defense. Right. But he like I said, he's got so much of the uh New England Patriots, like maybe he pulls somebody off of their former staff or you know, another one of the defensive coordinators that's out there, you know, that the Giants got bank the giants have money you know they could hire one of those top shelf defensive coordinators like i don't know vic fangio or something like that even though they've never worked together like maybe they could entice those guys with a nice big paycheck or something that is true it will be interesting to to find out how this goes but with the giants have their their general manager and now the uh the search for a head coach swings into full gear matt we thank you very very much for for spending some time with us today you know, we'll, we'll have to be, uh, we'll have to, we'll have to find out, you know, just, just how far your supply of, of Bill's gear actually goes. <laughs> well, you can check that over on my Twitter account at Matt Rich Warren. I'm, uh, I'm threading that up every single day. And so you can see that. Um, I hope that you guys don't get to hire Brian Dable until at least the uh, like middle of February, end of February. We... <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I, I, I do kind of like the Buffalo area. My son did live there for quite a while. He went to school that way up there. So, you know, so we, we could be nice and let you guys have a, have a little run, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matt, thank you very, very much. Giants fans, thank you as always for listening. Please remember to subscribe on YouTube if that's where you're watching us or uh, on the Big Blue View podcast channels anywhere that you uh, that you listen thanks as always for listening and we'll talk to you soon bye bye